Metal Springs that Meshe Rabbeinu was told on Hal Sinai that the eagle had been made. Pius made an eagle. Prime transgression of Avedizor. Meshe Rabbeinu waits comes down from the hall, sees for himself, and breaks the luchas. Meda says, why did he wait? What we normally associate as the necessity to see for oneself is when there's a lack of credibility. Here, Moshe Rabbeinu heard from the Rebbein Shlalem. So the simple read of Ria and Adam is not applicable here. Meshe Rabbeinu waited, though he did not have to wait, he waited. He waited to be instructive, to teach a lesson for Deiris, that a Dayan, if he can see for himself, should wait to act until he sees for himself. Medrash Rabbe on the Parsha. The Nitziv, in Breshis, says, Vaya Hashem ki toiv, the Rebbe put into vision, into the koyach of Ria, the sense of sight, an additional dimension that isn't in the other senses, that it brings to his spilus. It precipitates action. It becomes so internalized that it impacts one in a more complete and total manner, and therefore requires expressing it, acting, his spilus. A raya ledova, says the Nitziv, that Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't break the luchas until he sees for himself. The Svona says that Moshe Rabbeinu had the idea on Sinai, up on top, that the eagle was made. He didn't yet witness that it was being done by Simcha, by Tuplum and Mechelis. If it's done by Simcha, then that means that it was now internalized. Interestingly enough, this Svona is brought by a lot of Sifrei Chesidus of the Maila, the upside of Simcha. Here it happened to be a negative application. But it's the Simcha is the facilitator of internalizing. Once he saw that it's the Simcha, he had to traumatize them, to, to expunge it, to extricate it from, from their persons. It required now breaking the Luchas. Okay, so three approaches. The Medrash, the Nitziv, and the Svona. A Dayan should wait, that it brings to his pilus, and that there was information missing which now required, there was a new variable. What's a new variable? It's being done by Simcha. Simcha requires another response. Some Sefer asks in Parshas on the Medrash, in Parshas Dvorim, the Medrash says that Klai Yisrael, beginning of Sefer Dvorim, Moshe Avenu gave Teichocha, and it gives all of the places where he gave Teichocha. Midbaporan, Dezohov, Chatzeres, Why do I need all this geography? What's the significance of it? Says the Medrash, that's the Medrash question, the Medrash answers, because since Moshe Rabbeinu waited until before he's coming closer to his Ptira, he waited to give Teichocha. Why does he wait? Because there's more credibility on the part of a 
of a zoke. He's less suspect of having an agenda. He doesn't have chishbenes. He's closer to the final exams. It's a mile to wait and for a zokin to give toichucha. But there's a downside, possible downside. Somebody could write him off and say, oh, she nish given by zich. He was, he was already a little bit senile. He wasn't with it. That's the exposure, the vulnerability of being older. So there's a maila and there's a chesom. So in order to anticipate the possible downside, the possible problem, Moshe Abenu heads it off at the pass, and he says, this happened here, this happened there, chatzeres, deizov, mibapo, and tzim, to show you that, to demonstrate that his faculties are at optimal level. That's the message. Esther Sam Sefer, we have a posik, we have psukum later in the Torah. Loi nos leichoi, loi keya enoi. Moshe Rabbeinu had all his faculties till the end. My understanding of the Sam Sefer is that if it's an explicit posik, it must have been evident as well. And if it was evident, then, well, my kamash malon, what's the, what's the, what does the Medrash have to come and tell me this to ambush that problem that Ula Yaima Pentaimu that he wasn't with it? It was clear. It was obvious that he had all of his kaychas. Answer the Chsam Sefer that the Machlekes, the Babli, and the Yushalmi on the Bekiya Le'iyah in Bayes Rishon. Bayes Sheni is Yud Zayin. We fast Yud Zayin. Cumulative Poronias that have visited this day. But, according to the Novi, Yemiyahu, our Novi writes in Sefer Malochim that the Bekiya Le'iyah in Bayes Rishon was test. Test Tammuz. Yerushalmi says, so the Babli says, we relate to the second. Bias, because that's closer to us. It's brought that Bali Nefesh, Yachmir Ratzman, they, they will fast test as well. Yerushalmi makes a mapach, and Yerushalmi says, Morgan Abram mentions the Ramban, brings it. Tesis brings it. Yerushalmi says, also by his region was Yud Zion. Posik, Novi, writes Tess. Kilkul Cheshbainas Hayakan. They were so devastated from the pain, the tzav, the disruption in their lives, the death around them, they lost the chishbainas. Now, the obvious question is, of course we can understand that, but it's a novi that's writing it. He's writing it in the He's writing it in Ruach HaKadosh, writes Tess. So my understanding of what the Chsam Sefer says is that the Novi, as it were, wears two hats. He's an Ezrach min a minion. And he's suffering like everybody else is suffering. At the moment of truth, of course, he knows the Amos. But the Rebbe Nisham says, write it down according to the mistake so that it will be a hansocha, it will be eternalized, lederis, the level of the tzal, if even somebody of the caliber of Yemiyahu could have suffered from kilkul cheshbenes. 
How do I know then that it was Yud Zion, not Tess, and that it's a mistake, and that this is what happened? That I have a Mesavis. So the Chsam Sefer continues, and he says, since there would eventually be a Novi, that this Novi is going to get confused, and since I know that Moshe Rabbeinu saw all of the tzores that would ever befall Klai Yisrael throughout history, everything, Kuben Baislishen, Sheni, Inquisition, Holocaust, Chumineki, everything, anything that would ever befall Klai Yisrael, all the Puronis, Ada Yamachron, Chazal Dashan, Ada Yomachron. He saw it all. And we don't see anywhere that Moshe Rabbeinu got confused. But you might think, since hear me, oh, from witnessing Bayez Rishon, did get confused. Kumash Malon, that's the Medrash, is addressing, anticipating that problem. Kumash Malon, he didn't get confused. Continues the Chsam Sefer. Bermet, how come Yemiyahu got confused? And Moshe Rabbeinu did not get confused if Moshe Rabbeinu saw a hundredfold more tzaras. Now, I would have answered to that Shaila. Perhaps there's a fundamental difference between witnessing it, Benevoa, or living through it. It's virtual pain. But Yemiyo lived through it, so he got, he was there. Moshe Avenu, quote unquote, only saw it by Nevoa. But the Chsam Sev is not willing to make that differentiation. Kanere, he posits that Aspakaya Meira, the level of Nevoa of Moshe Avenu, is equivalent, is tantamount to being there, to being there by Messias. Some Sefer's tell it says, why did Moshe Rabbeinu not get confused and Yemiyahu did get confused? Again, doesn't differentiate between being there and not being there. Asparkal Yemiyahu is the same thing. Some Sefer says that Moshe Rabbeinu also wrote the Gula, saw the Gula. He witnessed the Gula, the Nebuah. Yemiyahu knew that there's going to be a Gula, but it's not the same as witnessing it. If he witnessed the gula, then it puts all of the tsar in context. So, medrash, yelamdenu, yelamdenu rabenu, parshas re'ei. Medu says, halachic question. Can we interrupt the reading of the Teichacha for Havsokas to give another aliyah? He says, no, shouldn't. Question and an answer. Why? Because it says a possible. I gave you the broch and the cloak. What does that have to do with the question? The Balaturim says over there, look at the Anochi of Anochi of Shemalu Kecha. What was the state of affairs amongst the other? Miracles that attended that encounter between Am Yisrael HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Kabbalah Satayra, they were Royim as the they saw the sounds. Long discussion unto itself. I would just parenthetically put in that the Rabbeinu Bechai says that from Avram Avinu, until Maimon Hal Sinai, there was an S. 
that though the Torah, which Avram Avinu had gotten Benavua, was not written down, it had all of the accuracy and validity from door to door till Hal Sinai, as if it was written down. I would submit that once Rebbe and then Ravina Ravashi take the decision that we have to write down Teresh Balper. This isn't the forum to discuss why we have to have a Teresh Balper as a Teresh Balper, but anybody that is interested in <coughs> Kiruv, in Abotas Teresh, has to understand that the pnimius of that. I think it's linked to, we mentioned yesterday that Rav Shmuel Rezovsky used to say, Who yiftach libeinu bisay rosecha? Don't say li, it says bi. You want to open up the heart, it's got to be with Taylor. In the Chura, we could say the same thing. That's Taylor Shabal Peh. Because we can't, without Taylor Shabal Peh, an understanding, it's a necessity. And how crucial it is for us to access any word, any nuance in Teresh Abiksav, we're all lost. And Habotas Teira and Kiruv falls or stands on that. So, Re and Archi. One of the fundamental differences between Ri and Shmir is that Ria, you can see a lot of things simultaneously. You see panoramically. Shmir, you have to hear sequentially, one sound after another. You hear sounds A and B together, it's neither A nor B, it's C. You heard it, you're now hearing a new sound that has merged. I would submit that the nest that the Rabbeinu Rechai talked about from Avram till Sinai, after Ravina Ravashi, Write down, Rebbe and Ravina Ravashi, write down Teresh Valpeh. We need a converse ness. What's the ness? That now, even though it's written down, it remains a Teresh Valpeh. That Siata de Shmaya, the Rambam is so medayik, that they had to be medagdik in every word, in every phrase, that it still had to have that Siata de Shmaya. The minimum was written down, and that's why Teresh Valpeh retains the character and personality of being a Teresh Balpeh. It's on the shelf. It's published. It's written. It's a Teresh Balpeh. I think each one of us that's had a difficulty in a, in a Tesis and a Raviki Vega has, can testify to it that it's a Teresh Balpeh. You need a Rebbe. You need discussion. And, and at all. Okay. So there are two ways to relate to the Peronius of Klai Yisrael. One way to relate to the Peronius, the Kiyom of the Teichel in history, is Shmiadik. You take each event in isolation, discrete, a separate event, or that's Shmiadik. Or you see it panoramically. It begins with a Brisbane of Solom. And it's going to climax with Bias Hagel. To make up sockers is to relate to it Shmiadik. To make up sockers in the reading. Not to make Reyanochi. Look at the Anochi. Reyamasakagas. See it panoramically. See the big picture. But says Hashet Tishmo. You have to feel that pain of every Jew in every place in history, but not succumb to it. It's all the difference in the world. Feeling it, relating to it, empathizing with it, but not succumbing to it. And so, Meshach Rabbeinu sees the whole picture. He sees it with the gula. So he doesn't get confused. It's panoramic. 
Yirmiyahu is at a certain juncture in history. As a Novi, as a Talmud Chochem, as a Tzaddik, he knows there's going to be a Gula, but he isn't witnessing it. He isn't seeing it. So he can be vulnerable to that, the Fidi Yerushalmi. <coughs> we don't see anywhere where there's a difference in Moshe Abenu's Nevoa, sometimes Aspechal Yemiyo, or sometimes not. It's reasonable to assume that it was consistent, since we have no, no indication of any kind of differentiation. So when Meshe Rabbeinu is told by the Rebbeinu Shlorem on Hal Sinai, there's an ego. I, I think it's reasonable to say that the Chsam Sefer would say that he saw it's besimcha like the Svona. He didn't have to wait for that. And he saw that and had the same experience, that same espinous as if he was downstairs. That's not why he waited, because the espinous was there and all the information was there, because it's a sparkal yamira. It's exact equivalent. So why did he wait? Well, possibly he waited like the, by the way, there's a sefer ikrim, that's quoted by Ramesha Feinstein that also goes a similar mahalach to what the Nitziv says, that there's another level of his spilus in seeing it. Fascinatingly enough, as, a, as the godel of Peskim as Ramesha was, he brings it in connection with a shaila of being, make, doing bika cholam over the phone, as opposed to being there and seeing and witnessing the state of the chayla. And since that brings to his spilus, since that brings to his spilus, you'll daven better if you see him. And that's part of the purpose of your being mevakeh Fascinating. But there, Rav Moshe mentions, somebody quotes this, Sefer Ikram, and Moshe Beno has, Moshe, Rav Moshe Feinstein has a problem with it. The Vuh of Moshe Rabbeinu, it's a different dagger. Can't reduce it to that. Mesha Chochma has a is not addressing this problem. Mesha Chochma is not addressing the problem of why Mesha Rabbeinu waited. He wants to know why did he break the Luchas? Mesha Rabbeinu doesn't do anything without the Cheshbon. Everything is instructive, didactic, purposeful, for deiris, for eternity. Why do you break the luchas? And the Rebbe Nisham endorses it. His initiative and the Rebbe Nisham endorses it. Yeshikeyach Hashem Shibata. Says the Meshech Chochma, he brings the Rambam, that the fundamental error of the early Oivdei Abed Zohar was that they, the transference, the thinking of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, as if he had human lim limitations. Right? If this was a lecture in, for new students in Osamech, I would say it was anthropomorphic. But since it's not, I won't. And because a CEO can handle only a certain amount of information. So he needs executive heads, and he appoints them over different departments. And he gives them a certain amount of autonomy. And of course, eventually they usurp more. And it becomes very, very, very kidai, propitious to ingratiate oneself with those executive heads. That's the way Avedo started, and it became a slippery slope. So that there are things in the world, people, things, that are self-contained, autonomous Kedusha. That's where the mistake begins. Because there is no Kedusha other than the Rebani Shalom assigning it and delegating it and reassigning it and redelegating it. The Rebani Shalom micromanages the world, doesn't macromanage the world. And the toast was that that's not possible. 
because you're thinking anthropomorphically. The Rebbe micromanages the universe. Hashgocha is not, not a leaf that grows without the Malach being hitting it because the Rebbe is mitzavah him to hit. I think I once heard from uh, Rebbe Shapiro that the hitting means to make it aware of its, of its lack, of its chson, where it has to go yet, where it has to be. hasn't actualized its potential. That's like a, like a slap. You're not there yet. So, Meshe Chochmah says, there's nothing in the world that is more Kodesh in this material world than the Luchos at this moment. Luchas Hashanis, Nisim, the letters stand. And so Moshe Rabbeinu wants to give the ultimate rebuttal to Avod Zohar. He takes the holiest thing, the, the Luchas, and he smashes them to teach, to demonstrate, to prove that there's nothing in the Bria that's a prerequisite to my relationship to the Rebbe Shlalem other than following the mitzvahs of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He says, Beis Migdash, El Yisrael, mitzvahs are true Yisbaoretz, all of the, how many mitzvahs are totally in the Beis Migdash, but most of our history we're going to exist without the Beis Migdash and without El Yisrael. And we survive. Are those minors? Are those dimensions? Of course. Do we have to do anything that's within the hishtadlis that we can do to try and make them come about? Of course. But it's not a prerequisite. I have a game plan for Golas as well. Chazal Tera has given me plan A, plan B, plan C. But I can't forget what is the, what plan A is when I'm by B or C, because I have to work for that. So the Meshe Chochma says that who had to then witness the Shri Resaluchas? Klal Yisrael had to witness it, because it's instructor for them. It's a lesson for them, to traumatize them. So if Moshe Rabbeinu would have broken the law, and again, he's not addressing this question of why he waited. He just is, wants to know why did he break the luchas. But according to the reason, the rationale that he's giving why the luchas were broken, then it was necessary to wait until it came down. Again and again, it said <coughs> in the psukim a number of times that Moshe Rabbeinu talks about Luchas HaShir Shavati, Le'enei Yisrael, Le'enei Hem, that they should see it. Because for them, Emes, what the Nitziv said, that the Ria brings to his spineless. Because it's then, it's not a question of Aspakal Yamira when they come down and they witness the breaking of Luchas. It's them, from their perspective. A Yitzhak Midvareinu is that have different possible explanations. There's the, this concept of the, the spilus, what we learn about the crucial dimension of simcha, the necessity for a dayan to witness in himself if he can, even if he knows the information and the truth. Taylor said, I can rely on Adam. No, if you can see it, see it. The Mesha Chochma. All of the above are true when 
We're trying to reach out to Achenu Bnei Yisrael. Whenever we can project the internalization of who and what, Tera, Tera life is about, it's all the difference in the world. A fellow once asked me, so you know, I've heard some of the arguments and the evidence that you people submit, but I have a problem is that I'm very challenged to be objective because everybody around here is acting so nice to me. So I seem to be predisposed to want to think that you guys are right. So first of all, I told him I can show you memos that I keep sending, Rabbi Lazarus can testify to it, keep sending memos to the staff here, please be obnoxious to the students. They don't listen. What is the real answer? The answer is that somebody comes in the door to any shear, to any lecture. He comes in with all kinds of biases. He's predisposed to certain urgencies and needs. And it's very hard to be objective. The most that we'll ever do is maybe balance it out a little bit. Araya Ladova. You're going to hear your and your teachers here, present certain ideas, certain evidence for this system, for the communities. Nachman Bowman, once talked to a young man who was a student of Bible criticism. He said, Take me to your community. Besides being wrong, me nay obey. But what did you produce? Who are you? Where are you? Show me on the map of history. Take a look at this map and take a look at that map. Is that hermetically sealed proof? No. But it's some evidence that something is at work here that's different than what is going on elsewhere. The Novi says, Sadiqim Yelchubo. Before that, he starts with that the Yeshon Dark Yeshem, there's a Yashus, the learning. But the people, what about Peshim Yekosh Lubo? Peshim Yekosh Lubo is take a look at what the world looks like without this. Remember, there was one Nobel Prize scientist that commented when he received the prize that there was a discussion he heard about freezing the seed of Nobel Prize winners so they could have another level of human being. He said, they only, he said, chapter and verse outside of the Beis Medish, he said, if they knew who those people were, they wouldn't even consider it. He said, I know them, because I'm one of them. Take me to your community, Rav Nachman said. Look what we produce. Do you see another community with so much chesed, so much caring? Do we have our failures, our scars, and our warts? Yes. It's, that is the final proof. There it's proof that we're human. But look at what we do with human beings. Look at what Teir and Shulchan Aruch, the level that lifts the merely human. So, I've told some beginners at Osamech over the years, you're going to hear a certain amount of evidence. 
Again, I shy away from the word proof, evidence. It's another discussion, but there's a fundamental difference. Evidence means probabilities. Proof seems to claim that it's sealed. We have to be mashlim with the Muna Bitochen, and that only comes from the learning of the Daf Gemorah, learning and living a life of mitzvahs. Then that conviction is certified. But there has to be enough evidence to make me want to make the effort to invest. Okay. So you're going to listen to this evidence. Now, make believe, you guys have heard a fair amount already. You know, you've been exposed a bit. You know that we wear tzitzes, certain things we don't eat, certain times we daven, certain things we do do, don't do. It seems to be a long list. Make believe, go through the following mock scenario. Make believe that the Shulchan Aruch, instead of saying, this is man kriyashma, how much time you have to wait between milk and meat, meat and milk. Let, forget that for a moment. Make believe the Shulchan Aruch said the following. Live like a hedonist, a libertine, a gourmand. Indulge every taiva that you have, every lust that you have, recklessly, randomly, and you'll be measured ultimately on the day of judgment by your maker. I gave you the capacity to have these pleasures, and I'm going to measure how much did you take, grab, during the X amount of years that you were here. Make believe that would be your judgment. Now go back and look at the same evidence. Do you think it would be more persuasive or less persuasive? I submit it would be a heck of a lot more persuasive. Because unconsciously you're anticipating the consequences. Wait a minute, wait a minute where is this going to take me? Now, parenthetically, somebody who has 2020 vision will see that the people in this community seem to be a heck of a lot happier. It does seem that the more you recklessly pursue indulgence, the less it delivers. But that, again, we can talk more outside the base Madrish. And so, a day, time, is a Bria that a Kodesh Bohu created. It's a reality. There's a Matthias. This day has been a day of reckoning. The Chsam Sefer says, there is a certain element of truth in the Tess and the Yud Zayin. Because the tack began on the on Tess. So there has to be enough truth there that even though it was a toast, that there was, it wasn't totally out of nowhere. But the climax should have been Yud Zion by his Rishon too. Benisham should give us the schus that the, through the consistency, the caring, for Am Yisrael, that we should all be zeicha, that b'mheir b'yameinu, we should see b'yas ha'gayl.